Okay, guys, I found my gorilla. Sorry about you being busy. Okay, hold on a minute. I really hope you can see me. You just look a bit low down, but hold on, I'll try and. All right, you should be able to see me. We should be able to have a chat. See, I knew something was gonna happen with it. I'm, I'm on a new journey today. I'm leaving from Dunedin. And I'm going to um, Katangata, which is um, down south, to see um, a friend who is going to You're over the speed limit. help me with my car. Hello my chocolate buttons, hello my cellulite cities, my wheelchair bounds, and everybody who is a mechanic today who is helping friends out. And obviously there's a reason why I'm saying that, because I am going away, I am journeying, I am going to Patangata, which is down south um, from Dunedin to see uh, an old friend as he's helping me with getting some parts for the car. I thought, because I have so much trouble with my camera and it's one of the things that a friend was meant to be teaching me, but um, of course he's so controlling that it, 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 it's like uh, giving cat milk and then taking it away or just giving them a drip at a bit. So I've had to learn to, to how to use the camera and everything else myself, which I'm not really good at instructions, but I am learning. I have got my gorilla up, which is kind of a tripod thing. Um, and I put power on, and then of course when I got in the car it said full, so I've had to stop and buy a 64 gig SD card, memory card. It was blooming 70 bucks. 70 dollars is just outrageous. And me being English, just hate paying the normal price. And it was actually in one of the two dollar shops. We have 70 bucks in the two dollar shop. You're over the speed limit. I'm gonna switch that bloody thing away because it's gonna drive me insane. So, I know that the last thing that I left up was quite negative and I, I didn't mean to leave it so long to put something else up, but I tried, normally I just post whatever is on my mind, it doesn't matter about the quality, it matters about that I'm actually getting it out there. But there's been so much happening that I did do a couple of videos before this. And it, it didn't come out right and I had to be careful of how I said things. So there's been quite a few things that has been going on. Uh, first of all, um, my son got in a fight because um, someone had cut him up, he stuck the finger up to them, the guys in the car turned around and went after him decided to punch him through the window which was open and his tooth had gone through the inside of his mouth. Then when he got out to fight, obviously the guy was quite a good fighter as well, so um, Akira had uh, grappled underneath his legs and he landed on the floor which meant that he'd hit the opposite side so eventually it ended up as through his face. So we went to hospital. He had 
16 stitches even though it was a small scar which was very sad because uh, we thought he would just get a few stitches and it would be over with but his jaw was not moving too good either the triage nurse there was absolutely brilliant she was just throwing because it was O week in Dunedin and orientation week can be quite bad. It can be anything from lighting couches on fire to tipping over cars. So, of course, lots of young people had, you know, been throwing down drinks and they were very, very drunk. And they were coming into hospital on uh, what they called the shopping trolleys. So she was not really having any of it whatsoever. So if they started laughing or, or playing up or acting stupid, she was just throwing them out really. Uh, <laughs> she did ask uh, Akia lots of questions like, you know, were you at the O week? Were you drinking? All of that sort of stuff. So he got through quite quickly, took a couple of hours, but I know that's quick. Uh, in New Zealand it's quick anyway. I know in other countries you can sit there for many, many hours. It's so hot, I'm just going to have to put the air conditioning on because it's like, so I'm really sorry about the noise. Switch it down, there you go. Um, so they had to stitch from the inside out and that's why he had so many stitches. It, it looked like he had got a piece of lamb and when you slice the lamb and you get that kind of cut meat look, that's what it looked like. It was a waterfall when he had arrived home and knocked on the door and he didn't want to, he didn't want to frighten me when I was in bed so he made me open the door and of course my hands were like you know, and he's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, and I'm like, it's not okay. Uh, but I guess they're the things that you go through when you, when you fight. So, that was the first thing. The, the other things is that I'd been to the dentist a couple of times, and... Uh, I found that the numbing solution was actually not working on my body anyway. It wasn't numbing the gums, so I had my teeth done without it because it was making my body really shake and go into like trauma. Uh, but I have got them done see so it does look a, a lot better I haven't got any holes or anything at the back now so that was major I still have to go every week for the next maybe four months to get a plate so I've got the just the teeth at the back done and what else uh, life situations. I was in bed for a couple of weeks and just couldn't break free, couldn't get rid of the pain. It was debilitating for some reason. And after all that, I got rang up by the chemist and told that my Xanax is no longer subsidized in New Zealand and it's too much to be able to pay for it. Because even though I get a disability benefit, they will only top it up so much. And I think I'm at the top at the minute. So this is Milburn, which we're going through at the moment. It's just a quiet, quiet little town. Um, also, I have... A stepdaughter who is now 25, maybe 26, and from when she was the age of a couple of years old, 
I have looked after her on and off for many years until nine years ago when uh, me and her father had broken up and I wanted to adopt her at that at that point but she wanted to go home it was just devastating for her what has been going on and, and she couldn't get it in her in her head right but she hasn't spoken to me for those kind of nine years and it's hard, it's hard to talk about but she never forgave me the way I treated her when she was when she was a, a child and I think when I was younger and, and she was a couple of years old and I was doing um, drug and alcohol counseling in England her dad and I had, had kind of known each other for a while and he was going through hardship with his girlfriend who had got pregnant on purpose and ended up having twins and she was pregnant at that time and me being me decided, you know, oh yeah, he really needs some help and, you know, I can help him and I'll talk to him and, and all that sort of shit. Never figured that I would get so emotionally involved and take over the care of the children because I never wanted to make mistakes again with children. But I didn't realize that every time my stepdaughter was around that he would treat me just like a piece of crap and it, it was in my brain that when we spoke it was and together that he was horrible and when he when she wasn't there it was okay so I just knew in my head that you know I didn't want her there and I obviously showed it and I didn't, I didn't see it, uh, you know, I just didn't give her love, I guess, as much as what I wanted to. And she hadn't forgiven me for that, she, she knows that I, that, that I hurt her. And it's funny because I have spoken to her since and she's just gone, I'm not speaking about the past, it's the past, I'll never forgive you for it. But she never remembers the good bits in life. We don't remember the good bits in life. We only remember the bad ones, don't we? Because life is hard, apart from those small occasions of excellence and beautiful memories which we try and capture. But she had met a guy over here in New Zealand that... Hold on. Sure, I'm going the right way. I think I am. So she had met a guy over here, and to start with, he was very nice. He was younger than her, he's only 18, 19, very tall guy, very large guy, and he was in the same school as what my son was so they actually knew each other and after a while he started in his in his bad days or his bad thoughts he would degrade her calling her a slut and fat and, and using all of the information that he could on her as ammunition which was so sad but she kept going back to him and the other family couldn't understand 
why she kept going back to him. And I did. I, I knew why you go back. You think that, you know, they'll change and that they, they'll figure themselves out and they'll come back as a wonderful person. So the wonderful person that you actually met in the first place. And as time goes on, the wonderful person becomes less and less and less and they just they just show you in any evil way that they can of how they're feeling so they literally portray that nastiness onto you and I know that I've been through that I've I've sat with um, some of the, you know the last four years showing him that I would you know, not block him out when my kids were there, that I was there for him and all he ever spoke about is what I didn't do. And the negativity just became more and more and more and more. And even though, you know, he'd stolen off me out of my credit card, which eventually ended up in me in being bankrupt, I should have gone and fucking knocked his block off and got the computer back which he bought from the money but I didn't because I wanted to show him that not everybody will leave him and you know that some of us are different but there's so many so many times that you can that you can be thrown about with emotions and I'd owed him five fucking dollars for a cup of coffee that he bought for the guy that is staying with me at the moment. And he just never shut up about it. He's like a fucking three-year-old just being jealous of this guy who was there. His brother didn't help because he kept winding him up as well with untrue stories. But when I'd asked for my weed eater back and he'd said no, it, I, it really fucking made me absolutely mad. When the other day when uh, Lysia was at home, I picked up the phone to him knowing that it would cause drama, knowing that it could have jeopardized mine and her relationship. But I wanted to tell him that his brother was sick with stage four with his um, psoriasis of the liver, considering he didn't believe that his brother was sick in the first place. And all he did was spoke about himself in just bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And I just see the bullshit now. And after me really getting to the stage where you saw on the last video, it was the only person that I'd rang up and asked, could you help me? I don't, I've never asked for your help before. Could you please just help me? And he got the text message but decided, no, he was just not going to do anything about it because he wanted to show me what a bad mood he was in. Considering he promised constantly, it didn't matter what I was up to, what I was doing. Um, and it he started making me nervous saying that things like um, that he has bad thoughts and he'll always be watching me and, and just you know talking about death and, and, and my death and, and stuff and I, I just don't want to fucking know he's, he's not I'm not allowing him to little thoughts in my head so he's got control of it control of me anymore so the relationship is gone but the reason I'm telling you it is because it's the same principle somebody who has psychopathic tendencies or behavioral disorders of what they call it now they don't call it narcissism or shy narcissism or, or psychopath it's just tendencies that they say and it means they're not a nice person so I had enough I'm over it 
so I said to my stepdaughter look I haven't been for you know there for you in the past because um, her dad was quite controlling as well and I'd been on my year my own for years in between relationships because I was nervous that the next person was going to do the same so it was easier not to do it so actually lots of time in between the the breakup and stuff it's taken me years to get back on my feet and to accept somebody in my life and it just so happened that I accepted the person who I thought needed me the most because he said he was homeless he'd come down here um, from the Christchurch earthquakes and stuff and to start with you see um, a, a good looking man but eventually when you know somebody's personality they become to me they become just ugly it doesn't matter how many times you look at them how they change you just see the ugliness inside so she'd come over, I told her my story, and suddenly she knew that I understood. I allowed her to, to speak about as much as she wanted, to repeat it over and over and over again. And I was trying to explain to her that the reason we talk about something over and over and over again is because we're trying to find an answer from somewhere. And until we find the answer, we're not going to have a closure. So that's why we talk to different people. But it's the one thing that people don't get unless they've been in the situation of domestic abuse, mental abuse, um, being with somebody for 20 years when you know that you shouldn't be with them or you're sick. Uh, all, all of those events in life. So she kept telling, asking everybody else, you know, what should I do? This has happened. And then she'd feel like she couldn't get an answer from anyone else. So she'd go back to the source to get an answer, which was him. And then she'd be saying, you know, why have you done this? And he'd just carry on throwing crap at her. And then the next day he'd be like, oh, so that's it, we're over. And it was it, it's really confusing so that's why sometimes we go back to the source is we can't get an answer and, and a closure to things so I decided I was going to take my own friggin advice and creature advice and just do what I should have done years ago and that was not only throw him out but chuck him out of my life as well. The stories about, you know, if I get money, I'll, we'll go on a cruise, I'll get it back done, you know, I'll give you the money back for the computer, blah, 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 bullshit, 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 bullshit. So, um, she had gone out one night and the guy had punched her in the face, thrown her all over the place, thrown her into a car. And even though she's got this fucking massive black fucking big lip, she's still ringing him or texting him going, why? Why did you do this? Did you understand? Was it because you were drunk? And it's because she's looking for that person that she met. And I had to explain to her that, that that person has now gone because you've allowed him to do too much to you without walking away. And he needs help. And sometimes it's just you both poisoned together. But one of you just tries constantly and the other one just doesn't. And I'm always seems to be the one that tries. Even with my son, I constantly try and be there and be supportive. And I allow him to get away with more things than I actually should do. Instead of being harsh. And I guess one of the reasons is maybe I'm nervous of if I don't 
then he may walk away from me and I don't want that so because I'm not going to be here you know uh, when I'm fucking 70 years of age then I want this time to matter for him you know when we're dead it's not about our body it's about the memories that they remember of what you did not necessarily what you looked like and now my daughter's back on the scene again she's in a shitty mood with me her arms were wrapped folded like who are you on the phone with and I'm like look I just need to do this and she's like no you don't you don't have to do this he, do you not get he's not there for you he's just hanging you on he's, he doesn't pick up the phone with these he's with another girl or having sex that's not love that's not that's not respect he's fucking telling you where he's been what he's done and yet you've done not none of those things because you were holding on to make sure that he had changed <laughs> how stupid of me so, I guess, I guess that's one of, shit, Kaitangada, I've gone the wrong way. I've just seen a little thing saying Kaitangada down there. I think maybe I have to turn around and I don't know how to turn around because we're on the motorway. Oops. They said it was a bloody sign and they didn't say it was just that's Bob Luther. Ah, okay. So I need do need to turn around. But I wanted to go through Bob Luther and kinda of go shopping anyway. No. I've got no I've got no money for that, so I'm just gonna have to Cherry Lane. Oh later. They're gonna place called Cherry Drive. That was beautiful. Oh, it was gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's pretty. It's Balclutha down there. New Zealand is a gorgeous place, I mean. So, I've been supporting her for uh, the last couple of weeks. And she sent me a message on... So she sent me a text message and said, look, even though I can never forgive you for what you put me through as a child, you are not the person that I once knew. You are the person I always wanted you to be, and I'm so glad that you are that person now. You're a beautiful woman, and I love you. <laughs> I was like fucking in tears. Hey, I don't know whether I'm allowed to go this way. Yeah, no, that's right, my Rochelle. Come on. Okay. Okay, so I need to look up the address. I don't know whether the power's still on. It still looks like it's on. I'm really hoping. I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just going to put it up as usual. So my apologies if it's all, you know, crap and all over the place. But you kind of have to just go figure it out with all, like, what the fuck is this? Um, with all my other videos that my life is just a bag of turmoil and it has lots of different branches going out which I'm trying to keep watered and keep the sun on so the branches can just stay strong uh, and make right decisions. So getting back to it, I did cry when she sent me that. I I'm so sorry that I was there for all of the wrong people. And I hurt the wrong people, especially a child, to um, what I gave as 150% to the adults.
but I can't change what happened 20 years ago, 24 years ago. But it doesn't mean to say that I can't make up for it now. Okay, I have no idea where I'm going. Say goodbye and I'll switch you on in a little while, okay? So, I'm nearly there. I think. I was dying for a wee as well. It's lucky there's lots of places to stop on the motorway. Eating um, a quickies. Oh, I tried. I had to get directions off the lady, and I'm really nervous about turning up because I am not proud of the way marmalade looks at the minute. And marmalade is the name of my car, and I either get called Mama Bear or Ma or Marmalade. By people who, for some reason, I think, remember marmalade but Mar not Marichelle. Um, so I'm really embarrassed of the way my car looks. She is filthy. And yesterday I tried spending, I was gonna bring um, my friend with me, my now no longer friend with me. Um, because they've got a, a B4 down here which I can get a piece of for the back because of the lights have cracks in them and they're going, the water's coming through and it's leaking into the boot which has happened for years but it never got fixed um, and I did go down to the pull and pay quite a bit but they want quite a lot of money for it so I'm hoping that, oh, okay, so I'm here. Kaitang is her. K-A-I-T-A-N-G-A-T-A. Kaitang is her. So hopefully I'll get to have more journeys like this. Because I just love getting out and about. Most of the house, well the house actually, the house was getting really organised and really clean and Neil, who is staying with me at the moment, um, I'll introduce you to him, he's going through crap, he's the nicest guy, he'll get a girlfriend no problem whatsoever, but his uh, his ex-wife, who is from the Philippines, had, now we know, had used him just to get citizenship over here and brought her son over, um, had a baby so she could keep the citizenship because if you have more than one child here, you can stay. And then on literally their third anniversary, she um, went back on New Zealand dating. Not nice. But he's going through such a bad time that he changes things around in the house and moves everything and everything was just organized. And then he started moving stuff around again last night, which means that 
it's all fine and good moving stuff around but I end up having boxes and boxes and boxes of shit to freaking organize but it does mean that I get organ um, throw lots of stuff out hi hey I'm at Water Street Water Street in Katangata. Uh, <laughs> just by the pub. Just by the pub. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going now. Okay.
needs to bring her down. Disgusting. I'm 